Hey Crypt Keepers, thank you for tuning into Amy's Crypt. Today we are going to be talking all about psychology and the paranormal and we have a lot to talk about so make sure that you're comfy, go grab a drink, grab a snack, get yourself a cup of tea or a glass of wine, I ain't here to judge. We're going to be deep diving into altered states of awareness and consciousness and the implications this can have on paranormal experiences. Is this all something that can offer up a rational explanation for paranormal experiences? or are these simply states that allow people to be more susceptible or open to the paranormal? This is actually a video that I have been wanting to do for a while for you guys. I get asked all the time, Amy, are you a believer yet? Are you still a skeptic? And the main reason as to why I am still a skeptic of the paranormal, despite having so many of my own unexplainable and weird experiences, is because of psychology. Now, for those of you watching who didn't know, psychology actually used to be a massive part of my life. I do have a university degree in psychological science, and back when I was studying psychology, I was really driven and wanting to pursue a career as a psychologist. That obviously fell through, now I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> But, you know, in a way I'm happy that it did, but it was just, you know, personal reasons in my own life that took me onto a different career path. So I also just wanted to note for you guys, I'm not currently working in the field of psychology and it has been a number of years since I studied psychology. So please take everything with, that I say in this video with a grain of salt. But because I do have a background in this all, I feel like the knowledge that I have and the points of view that I want to bring forward are still very relevant and very important for this video. I do also want to note that the purpose of this video isn't to take away from or detract from anybody's personal paranormal experiences. If you have, you know, had an experience of your own that you perceive to be paranormal, that is excellent. I think that that is really amazing and really interesting to me. The, more the purpose of this video is just to share some knowledge with you guys to get you thinking about possible reasons and explanations for all of the strange things that we could or can experience and a lot of people have that really you know it could be explained by something else and I think part of being an investigator one of the most important things is to be able to you know debunk now the first topic that I really want to chat with you guys about for this video is sleep states and this is kind of a good segue into the main debate that I really want you guys to think about throughout this whole video. And please, if you have opinions or thoughts on this, I really want to hear from you guys. So these altered different states, could these be something that allows us a rational explanation for people putting forward possible paranormal experiences. So for instance, I am asleep, I wake up in the middle of the night and I see a ghost. Could this be, you know, I'm still in a dream state and that is a completely rational explanation for what I have seen. Conversely, we could also look at this same scenario, the same situation and think, could this dream state have put us into a more susceptible trance to, you know, be closer to the veil or a different dimension or the spirit realm? However you want to think about this or whatever you believe, is this something that opens us up to these experiences more so than it just explains it? Now, I'll tell you what, it is very common for people to have paranormal experiences in relation and in around sleep. So of course we've all heard a lot of stories about sleep paralysis and a lot of these sleep paralysis events people actually perceive to be paranormal and I don't blame them because it really does seem like something that could be a ghostly encounter. Now we also will get a lot of people putting forward I had a dream and it you know in essence was paranormal and you'll hear this a lot with people recounting their you know visitation dreams where they'll have someone who has passed over whether it's a dead relative or a close friend who will come and visit them in their dreams and perhaps this is part of the grieving process or perhaps this really is a spirit coming to visit someone in their dreams and of course 
We'll always have stories of people waking to sight entities or spirits or ghosts while they were, you know, asleep. Whether it's as they're falling asleep or when they're waking up from a sleep state. So sleep is a very interesting altered state of consciousness to explore. For me, I had my first supposed paranormal experience in relation to sleep. So I actually have a full video which goes into detail on this experience, which I'm gonna link below for you guys. I'm just gonna kind of skim over what happened for the purpose of this video. But essentially I woke up for what seemed like no reason at 3am and I saw what I guess was the ghost of a little girl staring back at me and I've always been skeptical of this experience though it was so vivid and I seek more experiences like this just because I feel like there is the possibility there I was still in a dream state as I kind of woke up and it was almost like a hallucination. And I'll tell you what guys, sleep related hallucinations aren't all that uncommon. A lot of people will, you know, have hallucinations as they are falling to sleep and I believe this to be more common. It might be auditory, auditory hallucinations or, you know, it can at times be visual. Mine was visual as I was kind of waking up, but my husband Jared, for instance, he has a lot of sound related uh, things happen to him as he is falling to sleep so a lot of the times as he's falling into a sleep he can actually hear voices and music playing and maybe I'll discuss this with you guys in you know a separate video but it is kind of interesting to note that so many people experience these you know types of hallucinations and it makes sense that they could be in relation to dreaming you'll also find them to be a lot more common in people during heightened times of stress in their life also maybe they're just gaining very poor quality sleep during the times that they're experiencing these types of hallucinations. It does leave me to always wonder and second guess that experience. To me, it was so vivid. It was more, you know, real than any dream that I have ever had. The fact that I was not really woken up by anything and it just always, always gets me to second guess myself and question myself. Was this paranormal? It certainly felt like it could be. It really, really felt real. Or was this something more explainable and rational just going on within my head? So let's also dive in and take a look at sleep paralysis. This is another event that people often perceive to be paranormal and I tell you what guys, I can attest it is terrifying, it is extremely scary when you have sleep paralysis. Now for those of you who have never heard this term before, maybe you don't actually know what it is, maybe you've never experienced it yourself or maybe you have, you just didn't really know what it was. Basically what it is, is upon waking up, your body is completely paralyzed, so you can't move. You can look around the room though. And because your mind is still in a dream state, though you are conscious, you might actually see some very spooky imagery. So picture this, you wake up in a dark room, it is your room, you're in bed, but you cannot move. You look around the room and maybe you see a dark figure, something very evil, very scary looking in the corner of your room. That thing is watching you. You can't move, you can't scream. And then eventually that thing starts walking on over to you and it crawls up onto the bed on top of you and it is on your chest. And you actually can even feel the crushing pressure of it on your chest. Yes, this is terrifying and this is sleep paralysis and this is something that a lot of people, you know, experience on a nightly basis or maybe intermittently. Typically for me when I have had sleep paralysis episodes, it has been at times of great stress in my life. So not fun, not a fun time in my life, made even worse by not being able to sleep and being basically scared to go to bed. So of course it makes sense that there's plenty of people out there who are experiencing this, who believe this is some kind of paranormal phenomena happening to them. And I honestly, like, I don't blame them. That's exactly what it feels like. It feels like there's a dark entity in the room with you coming towards you, coming to get you. But humans around the world in lots of different culture experience sleep paralysis. It's not, you know, just subject to like one culture or you know certain types of people it is very very common for human beings to have sleep paralysis and there's a lot of common themes you know people claim to see the old hag they claim to see alien type figures they claim to see the hat man there's an array of these different 
types of entities that people tend to see. So I guess the lines are blurred there, like is this paranormal or is this just common themes going on in the human mind? For me, when I have had my sleep paralysis episodes, I don't believe that I was being visited by some dark sort of evil entity. That's certainly what it seemed like at the time, it was terrifying. But I do think that it was something biological going on within my mind, which was just in relation to the high amounts of stress that I was going through in my life. Now, if you guys are interested in learning more about my sleep paralysis episodes, I'm happy to do some videos on them. Just leave me a comment, let me know that you're keen to hear them. And I tell you what, I'm sure they'll make for some pretty terrifying, you know, story times here on my channel. <laughs> Now, of course, guys, there are different ways of achieving and reaching these kind of different states of being, not just, you know, sleep states. Obviously, drugs and alcohol is a way of getting into a different state of mind. And I'm sure that a lot of us have heard these stories of, you know, people having a big night out, whether they're, you know, taking drugs or consuming alcohol. And then, you know, maybe on their way home, they have a weird encounter with, you know, a ghostly apparition or some strange lights in the sky or an alien abduction or something of the like. And these stories for us, they always are kind of pretty easy to dismiss because you're like, yeah, well, maybe you would see some weird stuff <laughs> after how big the night out you had was, you know what I mean? But really, we should be thinking, are these people opening themselves up to the par these paranormal experiences by taking these, dr these different drugs and alcohol? Maybe they're more susceptible to it, or maybe they've just altered their mind states enough that they're just gonna see something weird. Now, I do want to mention and bring up some very interesting drug studies that I've done a little bit of reading on. I wouldn't say that I am an expert by any means, and I do think that there needs to be a lot more study in this for people to really, really understand and know what is going on with this kind of thing. But there is a little bit of thinking that there are some kind of psychedelics, there's some you know, special types of drugs that you can take that will replicate the experience that people who have had near-death experiences have kind of had. So apparently as uh, you die or you're about to die, you are dying, there's a special chemical release in your brain, which obviously alters your state of awareness, your state of consciousness. And supposedly there's some drugs that can replicate this. So some of the common themes that people have reported as you know they're having this near-death experience or they're taking these special drugs is that they're able to transcend and physically exit their body. They're able to travel to a different realm. They're able to talk to these, you know, special entities or spirits that aren't of human beings, or even that they're able to have some knowledge of the afterlife. And this study has shown that, you know, these feelings and sensations, whatever you would like to call them, can be replicated by taking sort of certain drugs. So are these people just experiencing this really weird high after taking these drugs? drugs and perceiving themselves to have kind of like a afterlife experience or are they actually getting closer to the veil and closer to death and just kind of like peeking between these interdimensions it's it is <laughs> like no pun intended really trippy to think about and you know there's been a lot of uh, experimental use with drugs and not just you know in western culture all throughout different cultures and there are some, you know, places in the world where taking this special trip, you know, is almost like a religious experience. You know, all this being said, I'm not one who's like hugely into drugs or anything by any means, but I do find the whole like near death, nearly dying kind of experience quite interesting. Now I do actually know somebody who claims to have actually exited their body after dying. So hear me out, I know this guy who went in for an operation and he, he literally died in the operating theater. So his heart stopped for several minutes. Now he was, you know, able to be resuscitated, thank God. But he does say that he remembers this whole experience. So supposedly as he kind of died, his soul or his spirit, whatever you believe it is and want to call it, 
kind of left his body but was still inside that hospital room but he was kind of standing in the corner of the room watching the hospital staff work on and try to resuscitate his body. Now I, need, I would need to talk to him further to know more details about what it felt like and how he got drawn back into his body but at some point he did re-enter his body, was resuscitated and you know I just find that you know really really interesting. We probably should also consider mental illness and abnormalities when we talk about all of this kind of stuff so there are a number of reasons why someone might have a hallucination you know they could be suffering from dementia or schizophrenia and I guess when you do think about it visually seeing something these visual aspects to you know a hallucination it could be perceived as something paranormal if you're seeing a being or maybe a shadow person coming through your house. I definitely can see how that can be misconstrued and misinterpreted you know, you could think that that is a ghost. There could be some reason why someone could perceive to have like an out of body or soul leaving their body kind of experience. So anyone who has suffered like a dissociative episode uh, might actually perceive this to be the case. So for myself, I've actually had this before and the best, it's really, really tricky uh, to explain to people what it feels like and what the sensation is like. It's not a nice thing. Uh, usually, again, it will come, it, it could happen to people during heightened times of stress, and that's certainly the case for me. But when I had a dissociative kind of episode, it felt almost like I wasn't in my body and I was kind of watching what I was doing through a lens, like watching a TV show or even like playing myself in a video game if that makes sense so it's a very difficult and tricky uh thing to describe to you all but i can definitely see how some people may feel like they're not physically in their body and i guess for me that would be the closest uh, feeling the closest experience that i could describe as you know leaving my body whereas there are some people who you know they say they've astral projected from their bodies during sleep at night and i don't know there's just so many things i could talk about here that i find super super interesting <laughs> now for me i don't personally think that my soul or my spirit had left my body i think that this was just my mind's way of dealing with a really really stressful situation i was going through in my personal life at the time and i think that with a lot of these you know mental illness they are very long term for people but sometimes you know symptoms could be very short lived or short term and just be erratic and maybe that is a possible explanation for someone having a paranormal experience now i do just want to add and make note that anyone who is in the paranormal normal field should be extremely careful when there's potential psychological issues present and the main reason and my main example that I want to give here is anything related to things such as possession and exorcism. I'm only going to touch on this for this video because I have a very large exorcism video coming out very soon in the future. I visited an exorcism temple in India and there was a lot of supposedly possessed people there but I just feel it relevant to bring this up and just say if anyone believes someone may be possessed or you know under the influence of a spirit a demon a devil whatever it may be we should take the care to rule out anything psychological first before you know diving into full-on exorcist mode i think that there could be people out there who are you know suffering greatly who just need the proper uh psychological psychiatric or even just medical help to get them through what they're dealing with and through with all their issues and not necessarily something to do with exorcism or religion or the like now I know that may be a sensitive issue and I'll be touching on it and talking you know more in depth about this on my channel very soon but I just feel like anything to do with paranormal and psychology there could be an overlap that could very much be misconstrued and misunderstood and you know what guys it's not just mental illness that could cause people to have a reaction to see something to hear something that isn't necessarily there it could also be something like you know a brain cancer or being very very sick where 
you have a very heightened temperature and I, I can actually attest to that. When I was uh, much younger, I think I was about 17, I got very, very sick. I did end up in hospital, but before I ended up in hospital, I was actually hallucinating. And it was something that, you know, was kind of scary for me, but also scary for the people in the room because of the way that I described what I was seeing, they thought I was being visited by the Grim Reaper. And that sounds terrifying. I've never really spoken about it much in general or at all on my channel. So if you guys want to hear the full rundown of this story, exactly what happened, please drop me a comment, let me know. I don't actually believe personally that this was paranormal or that I was visited by the Grim Reaper. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I was. But, you know, I, at the end of the day, I was very, very sick. I did have a really, really high temperature and I was seeing something. And that, to me, is a rational explanation as to why I would hallucinate seeing something like that. In reality, guys, there are so many reasons why our brain could perceive and think that it sees something that isn't really there you know, that doesn't exist. The same for just hearing things. I mean, think about it. There's so many reasons that I could probably just come up with now, like a gas leak, chemicals, or a very interesting one actually is sound. So one type of sound that we could consider here is known as infrasound. And what this is, it's a sound that runs at a very, very low frequency. So our ears can't actually perceive that they're hearing it. So it is outside of normal human hearing, but it can actually greatly affect us. So it can affect us physiologically, like it can make us feel nauseous, vomiting. It can also mess with your organs. And I don't know if this is actually true, but I'm just thinking like South Park and <laughs> the brown noise. I don't know if anyone has seen that episode, but look it up. Anywho, another really weird thing with infrasound is it can cause people to literally see ghosts. <laughs> So I guess the uh, effects of infrasound were really discovered in a laboratory. So there was a lab with a lot of people working in it and people were reporting, ugh, I don't really like going into this lab because I get a super weird, uneasy feeling, you know, maybe like I'm being watched, maybe like there's someone in the room with me, even though I know that there's not. And there were even a number of staff who were going into this lab that were citing apparitions, that were seeing ghosts down there. Now, obviously, I guess being scientists, they were like, we need to come of a rational explanation for this. I don't actually believe this lab is haunted. Maybe there's another reason people are feeling like this or seeing this stuff. And they actually discovered that there was some infrasound in this lab. I can't quite remember the details of the experiment, whether it was a machine, uh, air conditioning or, or something to do with, you know, air conditions. <laughs> but there was something in the lab that was causing a very low frequency sound. And when they took this away, the uneasiness, you know, the weird feelings were gone and the sightings of the ghosts were gone. So it really gets you thinking, how much, you know, of this weird infrasound thing could be present at actual haunted locations? Because if you think about it, you know, a lot of people will go to locations and they'll report to feel really uneasy, they'll see things. Maybe it's not necessarily that the place is haunted. Maybe there are some external influences affecting, you know, people's bodies and their brains. So I do think it's very important for us to think about and analyze when are people having paranormal experiences? Where are they having them? Under what conditions? You know, there's a lot going on that could be reason for someone seeing something. Mostly, I would say paranormal experiences happen at night, happen in the dark. And this makes sense because if you think of humans and our evolution, it it makes total evolutionary sense that we should be scared of the dark. And it is a common fear how many people are scared of the dark. So I start to try and think this through. Obviously, humans would want to fear the dark because you go out in the dark, you're walking around, you're more likely to like fall down a cliff or get eaten by some nocturnal predator or something. So yeah, we probably should be scared of the dark. So when we go out to a haunted location and we know all this messed up history that happened there, all this scary stuff that has happened to other people, we're standing there in the dark. Maybe we are a little bit more on edge. You know, maybe you got a little bit of adrenaline going. Maybe you see something out the corner of your eye and because you are so on edge, your brain starts running a thousand miles a minute and you're like, what was that I seen? Oh my God, was that a person? You know, and you can totally blow it out of proportion. 
Also, the human eye is pretty crummy. <laughs> and especially very crummy in the dark. Our vision, our, especially our night vision, is not very good. It's not very good in the, you know, the day either. We tend to just uh, see a very small amount with our actual eyes and our brains just fill in the bigger picture. So it kind of makes sense that when we see stuff, it's usually something captured in the corner of your eye. Now guys, there is just so much that I could cover in relation to this topic, but I did just want to sit down and kind of skim over a few different topics and gauge your, I guess, interest in this. Do you want to see more videos like this? Do you have any thoughts or opinions on the kind of stuff that I've been talking to today? I'm also, you know, I just want to reiterate, I'm not making this video to detract from, negate, or take away from anyone's perceived paranormal experiences. If you have had a paranormal experience that you yourself deem to be 100% paranormal and that is what you believe in, you're a believer, that is amazing. I think that that is spectacular and just, you're awesome. <laughs> I wish that I could be like that. I do try to be very skeptical and I wanted to put forward some, you know, possible rational explanations and things to just make you think. And I hope that it has been insightful and helpful to some people. But again, if you really genuinely believe that you've had a paranormal experience, hold on to that. I think that that is great. I myself am constantly questioning, for me, my most vivid and true paranormal experience was seeing the little girl in my apartment when I woke up at 3 a.m., which I've touched on in this video. And I try to explain it away so much, but the more that I do, the more real that she still seems to me. So I think that I'll always kind of treasure that experience, and I guess you should too. So as I said, I think as an investigator, it is very, it's a good thing to be skeptical. It's not necessarily bad. I think that we should always be analyzing what happens and looking for ways to kind of debunk and, you know, find a rational explanation for something before claiming this was a ghost, this was paranormal. I already see a lot of investigators doing this, which is great. Uh, you may hear a term called pareidolia kind of thrown around in the paranormal world. And that is basically looking at an image and uh, finding things that are familiar within it, whether it's, you know, looking at a ghost photo and it's just some, you know, smoke in a room and you see a face in it, you know? It's just human nature to pick out a face. It doesn't necessarily mean that it is a ghost. Now, you also get this with things like sound, so the spirit box. Like, sometimes you're listening for a particular sound, so when you hear a word, it will sound like what you are listening for. So it's important to just be aware of that kind of stuff. And I think that it's great to see, you know, people in the paranormal field looking for ways to debunk their own evidence. Now, I find so much interest in this topic and I hope that you guys have too. I hope that this video has been insightful, intriguing, you have enjoyed it in some way. And you know, it really brings up a lot of questions for me and I want to hear your opinions, you know, is seeing believing? Is it? Is it really? And you know, I really just want to bring up again my little debate here. You know, are different states of awareness and states of consciousness, are they explanations for paranormal experiences or are they just something that brings us closer to the paranormal makes us more open and susceptible to it i find it something very fascinating and interesting to think about so thank you guys so much for watching i hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please remember to like comment share and subscribe that really means a lot to me you can do more reading about any of the haunted places I visited on my channel over at my website, amyscrypt.com. You guys should know I'm also posting a lot of bonus content at the moment over on my Patreon and my YouTube members, which I have linked below. You guys should also go follow me on social media. I'm at amyscrypt on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. But thank you so much for watching Crypt Keepers. Until next time.